My name is James Arlington, a career correctional officer with 15 years of service under my belt, spent in some of the harshest penitentiaries in the United States. The year was 2018 when I received a peculiar assignment, a reassignment to be precise, that would forever change my life. A one-way ticket to a desolate, chilling corner of the world, a place few people even knew existed. North Point, an isolated prison located deep within the Arctic Circle. North Point, the final destination for society's most monstrous criminals, was known only in whispers amongst my colleagues. A place so harsh and unforgiving that it was considered a fate worse than death. It was not just the biting cold that was brutal, but the isolation, the sheer remoteness of the facility. The inmates sent there were meant to disappear to become ghosts hidden away in a frozen corner of the world. The journey to North Point was an odyssey in itself. First a lengthy plane ride to the northernmost accessible city, then a two-day snowmobile journey through the barren, ice-laden landscapes. The whole time, the wind wailed like a tormented spirit, a bone-chilling symphony that became the soundtrack to my days. When I first arrived, I was struck by the facility's stark imposing figure against the white expanse. It was a minimalist architecture beast made of steel and concrete, designed not for comfort but for containment. It was surrounded by an endless expanse of ice and snow, the landscape so white it was blinding, a blank canvas stretching out in all directions, swallowed by the looming darkness of the polar night. The only thing breaking the monotony of the frozen scene were the faint glimmers of the northern lights, casting eerie undulating shadows on the prison walls. My first night in North Point was an exercise in mental fortitude. The cold was expected, the bone-deep chill seeping into every corner was a given. It was the silence that was unsettling. Despite housing some of the most dangerous men on earth, the prison was eerily quiet. It was as if the icy landscape had seeped into its inhabitants, muting them. The wind's howl was the only consistent sound, a haunting lullaby that kept sleep at bay. As the newest addition to the small security staff, I was quickly acquainted with our procedures. We were isolated in every sense of the word. We were our own governing body, enforcing law and order within the prison's icy walls. We were the law, the judge, and the jury in this desolate world. We held lives in our hands, yet our own lives felt inconsequential, tiny sparks of existence in a vast frozen void. We were keepers of the damned in a place that felt damn near uninhabitable. In the beginning, there was a sense of routine, a sort of rhythm to our days. It wasn't normal by any means, but it was what we had, what we clung to. Little did I know, the prison had a life of its own. A dark, twisted heartbeat that throbbed beneath its cold exterior, and in my time there, I would be pulled into its icy grip, drawn into a chilling narrative that was as much a part of North Point as the steel bars and concrete walls. It wasn't until several months into my tenure at North Point that the first sign appeared, an anomaly that disrupted the well-established rhythm of our isolated existence. It came in the form of an inmate named Carl. Carl wasn't an ordinary inmate. He was serving multiple life sentences for a string of horrific murders that had garnered national attention. Carl was a quiet man, rarely participating in the limited social interactions North Point offered. He was a specter in his own right, barely there, just another shadow cast by the towering prison walls. Carl's sudden interest in what appeared to be art was the first crack in the veneer of our tenuous normalcy. He began obsessively drawing strange symbols on his cell walls. They were not your usual scribbles or crude drawings often found in prison cells. Instead, they bore a striking resemblance to ancient hieroglyphics or tribal markings, meticulously detailed and strikingly complex. The symbols spread across the stark white walls of his cell like a plague, eerie patterns that seemed to pulsate with a life of their own in the prison's harsh artificial light. Even more unsettling was the manner in which Carl drew them. He would sit for hours, his eyes glazed over, his hand moving with an almost trance-like determination. I recall one instance when I had been assigned to check on Carl. The sight of him sitting cross-legged in his cell floor, hunched over deep in concentration, 
the eerie blue light from the single small window reflecting off his wide eyes, is an image that still haunts me. There was a palpable intensity to him, a potent energy that made the air in his cell feel heavy. One week after Carl began his unnerving artistic venture, he was found dead in his cell. His face was contorted into a macabre mask of terror, his bloodied fingers raw and ragged from incessant scraping against the walls. The once white cell was now a chilling tableau, Carl's lifeless body at its center, surrounded by his mysterious symbols etched into every surface. The cell felt colder, the air stagnant and charged with an unspoken dread. In the confines of North Point, we were bereft of the necessary resources to carry out an adequate autopsy. We were left to speculate on the cause of his death, but no theory seemed to fit. Carl's cell was locked from the outside, the bars on his window intact. There were no signs of struggle, no hints of self-harm other than the damage done to his fingers. He had been healthy, as healthy as one could be in such a place, showing no symptoms of illness leading up to his death. His sudden demise left a chilling question hanging in the frost-filled air. What could scare a man like Carl to death? It was this question that marked the beginning of our descent into a chilling nightmare, the genesis of a terrifying mystery that would consume us all. Carl's death was the first domino to fall, setting in motion a series of events that turned our ice-encrusted purgatory into a horrifying battleground for our sanity. In the wake of Carl's unexplained death, a sinister undercurrent pulsed through North Point. A sense of foreboding settled over us like a shroud of perpetual night. The icy landscape outside, once merely a reminder of our isolation, became a reflection of the dread that began to infiltrate our lives. We were frozen in place, ensnared in the tightening grip of a fear we could neither see nor understand. Strangely, it was the inmates who first began showing signs of distress. Even the toughest among them, men who were hardened criminals, were affected. Whispers started spreading like a contagious disease through the cell blocks, each murmur an echo of dread. The inmates spoke of hearing hushed voices in the shadows, whispers that gnawed at the edges of their sanity. Initially, we dismissed these reports as paranoia, an expected reaction to Carl's abrupt and inexplicable death. However, as time passed, the situation began to deteriorate. One by one, more inmates, even some of my fellow guards, started reporting similar experiences. There were accounts of chilling drafts seeping through closed doors, fleeting shadows darting at the edge of vision, and an insidious feeling of being watched. But what was most alarming was the repetition of Carl's cryptic symbols. They began to appear in other cells, etched in the corners or hidden beneath bunks, drawn by trembling hands that had succumbed to an inexplicable compulsion. The intricate symbols served as a chilling testament to the escalating horror that was taking root in North Point. As the days turned into weeks, the ominous whispers turned into screams that echoed through the prison's concrete hallways. More inmates were found dead in their cells, their faces frozen in a grotesque mimicry of Carl's final expression of terror. The cycle of fear perpetuated itself, transforming North Point from a prison to a crypt, the icy walls of each cell serving as tombstones for those claimed by the spreading madness. In the biting cold of the Arctic, the eerie stillness of North Point was shattered by a symphony of screams, whispers, and manic etching of symbols. A horrifying realization dawned on me. We were not just dealing with the aftermath of a mysterious death. Instead, we found ourselves at the mercy of something far more sinister, a creeping dread that was consuming us, drawing us into an abyss of madness from which there seemed to be no escape. In the heart of the Arctic, we were becoming prisoners of our own minds, captives to a terror that was as relentless and unforgiving as the frigid landscape that encased us. The prison had become a vessel of our collective fear. The echoing whispers a chilling soundtrack to our spiraling descent into madness. The iron-clad grip of North Point, already unforgiving in its icy desolation, began to squeeze tighter. Our frozen sanctuary morphed into a chilling bedlam, the hum of routine and order fading into a distant memory. The frigid air was filled with an omnipresent sense of dread that left us gasping for breath and the once quiet prison reverberated with echoes of despair and terror. 
The inmates, driven to the brink of sanity by the relentless whispers and the inexplicable deaths of their peers, rioted. A violent uprising born out of primal fear and desperation, they thrashed against their cell doors, their screams shattering the perpetual silence that had once governed North Point. The walls of the prison seemed to tremble with the force of their terror, the steel and concrete shuddering as if sharing in their dread. The correctional officers, including myself, were left to combat the chaos while wrestling with our own encroaching fears. We were understaffed, unprepared, and unnerved. Each passing day stripped away a piece of our rationality, our courage dwindling under the weight of the unknown terror. Some of the staff started to desert their posts, their will broken, choosing to brave the frozen wasteland outside rather than face the unseen horror that lurked within North Point's walls. Then came the most shocking blow, the death of our warden. He was found hanging from the rafters of his office, his bloody swaying in a macabre dance with the chill wind that swept through the room. The sight was enough to freeze the blood in my veins. His eyes were wide open, bulging in terror. His cell was no exception to the spreading curse. It was covered with the same haunting symbols that Carl had first drawn. The sight of the man who had once been the epitome of authority and control, in such a state of despair, sent waves of horror through the prison's already distraught populace. It was a chilling reminder of our vulnerability, an echo of the harsh reality that not one of us was safe from the insidious terror that had claimed North Point. As one of the last remaining staff members clinging to my sanity, I found myself at the helm of a sinking ship. The prison that was meant to survive as a monument of justice and punishment had become a tomb. It was a mausoleum of icy steel and concrete, housing not just the damned, but the damnable as well. The unnameable fear that had turned our lives into a nightmare. The arctic winds, once just a chilling companion to our solitude, howled louder as if to match the rising tide of terror within us. North Point, our fortress amidst the snow had turned into a playground for our darkest fears. The isolation we had once deemed as our greatest enemy was overshadowed by the dread that now clung to us, as pervasive and deadly as the frost that cloaked our prison home. With every passing day, the sinister force that had infiltrated North Point seemed to grow stronger. The madness that had descended upon us twisted our reality into a grotesque parody of what it once was. We were trapped, not just by the endless expanse of snow and ice that surrounded us, but by the ever-tightening noose of terror that gripped our minds. We were prisoners in every sense of the word. There were fewer of us now. The eerie stillness was often broken by the eerie thud of a body hitting the floor, a sound that became alarmingly regular. Every time we discovered another victim, their eyes wide with the same terror that had claimed Carl, the cold seemed to bite deeper as if feeding off our fear. Despite the deaths, the whispers never ceased. If anything, they became louder, more insistent. They filled the icy hallways, echoing around us as if taunting our helplessness. The symbols continued to multiply, their cryptic patterns a chilling testament to the horror that claimed North Point. Sleep became a distant memory. The shadows that danced at the edges of my vision seemed to take on menacing shapes in the dim light, the darkness of the polar night merging with the darkness that had seeped into our souls. Every creak of the prison structure, every howl of the wind, amplified our growing hysteria. Paranoia became our constant companion, fear our only certainty. In the midst of this escalating chaos, I stumbled upon a diary hidden in the warden's office. It was old, the pages yellowed with age and the ink faded. It belonged to one of the original builders of North Point, a record of the prison's construction. As I leafed through the pages, a horrifying truth dawned upon me. North Point had been constructed on sacred ground, a place of ancient and forgotten power according to indigenous folklore. It was a place where the veil between the physical world and the spirit world was said to be thin. The symbols that had plagued us were not just the creations of a madman. They were centuries-old spiritual symbols, used in ancient rituals, to communicate with the other side. The realization hit me like a bolt of lightning. The disturbing occurrences, the whispers, 
the deaths, it all fell into place. We had not just been dealing with the despair and desperation typical of any prison. We were trapped in a battle against something supernatural, a malevolent force that had been awakened by our intrusion. Armed with this chilling revelation, I realized the true nature of the nightmare that had enveloped us. We were caught in the crossfire of a war that had started long before North Point was even an idea. An age-old struggle between the living and the dead, the seen and the unseen. The prison was not just a place of punishment for the living, it was a battleground for the restless spirits disturbed by its construction. We were not just fighting against our fears, we were fighting against a force that existed beyond the grasp of our understanding. A force as old and relentless as the icy wilderness that surrounded us. In the heart of the Arctic, North Point was not just a prison, it was a threshold, a portal to a world beyond our comprehension, a chilling monument to the power of the unseen. As the horrific truth of our situation sank in, I felt a frigid grip of dread clutch my heart tighter. I was overcome with a chilling sense of helplessness, realizing that we were entangled in a terrifying supernatural web that stretched far beyond our comprehension. Emboldened by the horrific revelations, I decided to confront the horror that had consumed us. I needed answers, a way to put an end to this living nightmare. I started drawing the symbols myself, meticulously copying patterns that were etched into the walls of the prison. In my desperate need for understanding, I found myself retracing the steps of the fallen, plunging into the depths of the very madness that had claimed them. I began hearing the whispers more clearly, an eerie symphony of ancient voices echoing through the desolate corridors of the prison. But they were no longer just chaotic whispers, they transformed into clear messages, echoes from the other side filled with anger, resentment and a longing for release. One night, as the arctic winds howled against the fortified walls of North Point, I found myself drawn to the prison's center, an open courtyard that lay barren under the haunting dance of the northern lights. I could feel the air vibrating with an intense energy, the unseen force that had tormented us coalescing into a powerful entity. I began to etch the symbols into the snow-covered ground, my hands guided by a force beyond my understanding. As I drew, the whispers crescendoed, turning into a resounding chorus that seemed to vibrate the very air around me. I could feel their anger, their desperation, their unbearable pain. Then there was silence. From the icy ground beneath me, a blinding light erupted, engulfing the courtyard in an ethereal glow. The snow around the symbols I'd drawn started to melt, steam hissing up into the frozen air. The ground trembled beneath my feet, a deep rumbling echoing through the heart of the prison, and then they appeared. Shimmering apparitions rose from the ground, their translucent forms radiating an otherworldly light. They bore the faces of the people who once called this land their own, their eyes reflecting centuries of despair. They moved around the courtyard, their spectral forms swirling in a haunting dance with the icy winds. I was standing at the threshold of two worlds, bearing witness to an ancient force that had been disturbed by the construction of North Point. The spirits of the land, the unseen inhabitants of the prison, had been awoken from their eternal slumber and drawn into a conflict they never asked for. I felt their pain, their resentment, but above all, their longing for peace. They were not the villains of this horrifying tale, but the victims tethered to a world they no longer belonged to because of our intrusion. And then I understood the horrible twist. The prisoners of North Point weren't the only inmates locked away for their crimes. We were all prisoners, bound by our ignorance, trapped by our inability to see beyond the confines of our own understanding. We had imprisoned the spirits of the land, encasing them within walls of steel and concrete, tethering them to a realm they wished to depart from. The realization was as chilling as the arctic wind that swept across the prison grounds. We were not the victims of a haunting, but the perpetrators of an imprisonment far crueler than any human could endure. And now we were paying the price. As the dawn broke over the icy horizon, North Point was silent once more. But it was not the silence of fear or death, it was the silence of understanding. 
the quiet echo of a chilling revelation. In the heart of the Arctic, amidst the desolate wilderness, stood North Point, a prison that was a tomb, a tomb that was a threshold, and a threshold that had become a prison. And within its chilling confines, we were all prisoners, trapped by our deeds, bound by our ignorance, and haunted by our past.